what's up everybody how we doing welcome back to another edition of cork stats here on the mayo media network on youtube with your host john legaza the big dude with the big mouth from the big apple big johnny stud baby coming to you worldwide from brooklyn new york as always what's going on everyone hit that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel check out the baseball playlist it's off the hook feeling robust as ever Woo did you see the news feeling pretty good today always nice to get a little bit of validation if you've been following along though i did not win the fswa award for best baseball article i have been hired by the athletic i'll be featured on the draft kit this season, the first article out today. I had that one under lock and key, feeling really good about it. The very first article is about, it's a market report, but again, my style, I really don't like to fit into anyone else's molds. I always like to be different. And rather than look at just nominal movers in the ADP market, we're taking a look at volatility, the most volatile players combining the biggest spreads between min and maxes, and then 10 players that have newly entered the top 600 ADP for you late drafters out there, although a couple of those names are going to be fantasy viable by the time we hit the regular season. And if you want to find out who, sorry, they call that a teaser in the business. You got to check that out. Make sure you like the video and, of course, subscribe to Mayo Media Net if you want more of me. Check out the Cork Stats YouTube channel or the Cork Stats audio podcast. All right, everybody, let's get back into these positional breakdowns and again back to breaking the mold kind of creating our own I everyone does rankings I, I don't want to just do rankings not that I don't think that they're helpful it's just everyone else is doing it so when you come here to cork stats to hang with the big dude I really like to make sure I'm bringing the nuance bringing the context and trying to challenge the mind a little bit look at things from a different perspective that's what we'll be doing today I like to use the bat x projection system that's my favorite projection systems for offense if you're familiar to my stuff, I'm not really into projections for pitching. I think pitching is very individualized, and we really need the electron microscope, and that's what I'm doing. Back to that playlist, check out Ranger Suarez, Jordan Montgomery, Robbie Ray, Hyun Jen Ryu breakdowns. It is granular people. Check out the Twitter handle at MLB Moving AVG. My pin tweet is a granular breakdown of the pitchers at the very top. Right now, the fire hydrant is wide open. We are a fount of baseball information here at the Mayo Media Net. Man, make sure you check out the podcast as well. It's not just video, though I will have some images. I'm going to try and talk everyone through it. So what we'll be doing today is looking at the third base position. And again, rather than just ranking them, we're going to use the bat X projection system and dollars return and chart it. We're going to plot that on a chart in accordance to ADP to look for relations. So that will help to give us an idea of value. Right? That's where rankings kind of fail us. Anybody can say player A is better than player B. Well, a lot of times they go in order. When we look at projections opposed to ADP, we are going to identify maybe players that are not expected to return enough for their draft position. And then others may be in the opposite direction. So, as always, I'm going to put up the projections. These are the current Bat X projection systems um, results with the dollar value attached on the right and the ADP on the left. Audio listeners, I'll walk you through it just really quick. I wanted to walk through last year's stats really quick. Of course, can't cover all 12 of the 3D B1s, but I'll give you an idea of the landscape. Jose Ramirez going way up top. He returned more than $50 last year, 111 runs. 103 ribbies, 36 homers, 27 steals. Hachi, Machi, Liberace, Ramirez was phenomenal, and that was with a 266 average. He had a 278 XBA. Sky is the limit for J-Ram. He's one of a few people I think could finish as the 1.01 overall. Then it's Devers and Machado, both really good. Devers more stick than speed. Though he did give you five steals. He got thrown out five times as well. Hard to look for a lot of steals from a guy that's not necessarily fast and then also gets thrown out half the time. So you can see where Devers gets passed over from Machado when Machado was more likely to give you those 10 or 12 steals. Counting stats, average, everything, stat pages full for both of those guys. I might like Devers as a better pure hitter than Machado, but, you know, the pop at seven or eight extra steals, very hard to discount that. You know, if you need 100, you're saying this player gets you an extra eight. You know, 8% of the total load to get you to an overall final. Hard to sneeze at. After that, Austin Riley, love Austin Riley. People are calling for a regression. And don't get me wrong, I don't know if he can necessarily repeat last year, but I would like to point you to another one of those videos. We dove into Austin Riley. Spoiler alert, he's awesome. And when I, in particular, see disciplinary gains 
exchanged with contact gains, right? He's striking out less, making contact more. We know the quality of contact is phenomenal for a guy like Riley. So I think those numbers are believable. I really do like Riley. Let's round out the top 12. Mondesi, Arenado, and Bregman, and Bryant, Rendon, and LeMay, who are all the way kind of down. There are a little bit of some similarities there, right? We're looking for a bounce back. We've had some injuries with Bregman and Rendon. In particular, Bryant, Probably in the full years of that career, though, he was pretty good as well. 265 average, 86 runs, 73 ribbies, 25 bombs, and 10 steals. Rounding it out with uh, Turner and Moncada, right? Oh, and Cabrian Hayes. Sorry about that, and Cabrian Hayes. I I didn't want to say his name if it didn't. So now let me focus on those audio-only listeners. That was kind of the overview of the position, really kind of top-heavy, a little bit more in that B tier, and then it's really kind of spread out. Some people are off of Riley because they don't think it's repeatable, and then some people are off of the injury guys because they don't think they're going to bounce back. And then before you know it, you're deep into the weeds. So we really, let's make some determinations here. Let's take an overview look at the projections in order of return, we got Ramirez returning 33 bucks. Right behind him, Devers and Machado 29, 30, 28, 60, um, re- um, respectively. However, we've got to be careful, right? Subscribing to projections so absolutely that we should never let a 50 cent discrepancy in return throw us off. Because you could see Devers 282, 37, 97, 101, and 5. Machado, 277, 36, 91, 102, and 9. Derek Hardy not really buying into the speed from Machado. And see, there is an example of where I mentioned how you play those steals, kind of determining that outcome. I think of Devers as being a better pure hitter. Like I mentioned, I thought Machado was be better than him by more than four steals. If you're into the projection systems, maybe you got to be looking at Devers greater than sign Machado. Back to those steals, but also the average Riley projected for 266, 30, 83, 86, and won a far drop off from last year. That puts him at $15.50, but also in a tier of his own where he's going. Mondesi Arenado at 11 bucks. Same for Bryant. Bregman down at 10. Rendon, 6. LeMahieu, 3. Cabrian, he 6. Moncada at 5. Notice I didn't mention Justin Turner. Popping off the page with an ADP 153 with a $16.5 projected return. That 288 average doing a ton of the heavy lifting. Let's stop and talk about that real briefly in specifics. Batting average is so important. It's also the thing, the thorn in my side, when I first made the change over, the move from big money, high stakes point leagues into big money, high stakes roto leagues, where I got killed and I thought I was going to be fine because I thought I took care of the specialty categories. When I say say that, I mean steals and saves. I thought if I was good in both of those categories, then the translation would be pretty easy. The you know hole in the arm or the chink in the arm there right under the arm, right under the neck there as well. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you kind of get that nerdy reference, was batting average. The problem with batting average is it's very hard to make up in season where the specialty category is not so much. You could grab a rabbit. You can grab a closer and they'll give you that one category even if the other ratios are not great. The problem with batting average is there are batting average guys. One, it takes a long time to do it. But two, that one person is not going to be able to raise the tide for your entire team if you don't hit for average. So average, you want to get out in front. And you want to have guys that have done it historically. You want to have guys that are projected for batting average. I'll give you a look behind the curtain in my own strategy this year. I am not drafting players projected for below a 250 average. Now, funny enough, the average department in third base looking pretty good up top. The only player below 250 is Yohan Makata, but it's 249. Again, he's another player that I did a deep dive on. He's He is so enigmatic. He's very hard to get a hold of. We know the talent is there. We know the team is awesome, so the context is great. And he's young. He had a bit of a problem with COVID, and I wonder if the time off will help. COVID, think what you want about it. It has disproportionately affected people differently, right? It's been different. Some people went right back to work. Uh, who was awesome? Was it Goldschmidt? Was awesome? Or Arenado? One of those guys had COVID and was awesome. And other players, not so much. So we have to be careful with how we mix in COVID analysis as being subjective and not really widely reported on. We know Moncada was awesome. We know he was really sick. Can he bounce back? If he does, I think that would be a part of it. I really don't think it's a skills problem. 
right now. So we walk through the overview of last year, what we got. Now we walk through the overview, through the projections of what at least Derek and his systems are expecting. And let's just, before we go on to the last part, let's speak to that just really briefly, how to use projections, people. One, I think they're very important. And for all the granular work that I do and my own projected work I do, I still use them. Even if you don't believe they're accurate, which I think it's proven they are, but even if you don't want to use them, let's say, there is still a use to them, a pragmatic use to projection systems, and it's the fact that they move the market. So whether or not you agree, you have to understand that when projections spit out either a really good one or a really bad one, right, something outside the middle there, outside the mean, the a certain percentage of the market is going to react to it, and an even smaller percentage of that is going to overreact to it. Right, we've seen that with short stops and prospects with O'Neill Cruz. His projection came out at first with Steamer, it was through the roof. His ADP went with it. So when that happens, projections can be kind of self-fulfilling prophecies in the draft room. I don't mean that they'll happen in real life. That's not how it works. But understand that there are people who use them. There are people who plug them into formulas, and those formulaic equations are going to weight them. You know disproportionately if that's the way you feel about it. So just to speak to projections really quick, I use them, I love them, I respect the people that do them, I don't subscribe to them, absolutely, but I do understand that they have a place in the market because they move the needle. Now you can use that in like a judo mentality that if it's going to bring momentum, you can then try and sidestep and use the momentum against it. That's what we want to be doing, identifying the values, identifying the opposite of values, the wastes, I guess, and make our decisions based around that let's get into the last piece of the exercise where you see the chart here now um the line is funny all um props and respect hat tip to my boy toby g at bath of crazy the line i was using in the original ones he did ask about the line and why it looked a little bit off i was just using the regular linear line because i hadn't tested it but he is right there really should be a, a bit of a curve to it because of the expectations um so this is all corrected this graph is correct and you can see on the left is your dollar value. The right is the players in the ADP. And I walk through a bit of that. So a bit of the exercise we've done already is kind of being uh, vocalized here. I should say visualized. Our vocal work is being visualized on the chart. So let's get at the top. And the way you would use the line, last thing would be, again, loosely. You're not subscribing to the line. It's a loose understanding of value. That as we move across the chart to the right, meaning down the draft board, higher in ADP. We want a higher point of return, right? So if the dollar goes up, we're looking for the highest point on the rightmost part of the chart. That makes sense if you're looking for value. It's going to be hard to find value on the left side. What we're really doing on the left side, which is the top of the draft, is looking for players that will disappoint. Ramirez, Devers, Machado, all above the line. And it makes sense. Any player above 30 bucks will not be a waste almost anywhere on the draft board. Find yourself players that return 30 bucks. You're going to be doing pretty good. Now, I want to get to Austin Riley at his ADP of 50. If you are subscribing to the bat axis projections, think there will be that much regression. We're talking 35 points in batting average, bunch of home runs, and then the counting stats to go with it then I think you'd have to avoid Riley at ADP 50, returning $15. He's on the wrong side of the value chart. And if you look a little further down the battlefield there, a little bit, you know, keep that head on a swivel. We mentioned Mondesi, Arenado, Bregman, and Bryant, right, all between 10 and 1150. Why wouldn't you move back? And then in Bryant's case, what's 35 picks to get kind of a similar return right if you like brian at his 11 you're skeptical of riley at his 15 then there's no reason to pay up 35 picks dive back punt back i should say and take brian now i in particular i'm really high on riley and when i punch in my riley calculation i think i have him over 20 dollars so at over 20 dollars he would be a value so there's where understanding projections bucking them and using your own work to apply in the draft room is really important. I can't make that decision for you. So according to the bat X, Riley is not a value. By my work, I think he's more properly valued. Again, ADP 50 is hard to get a big return. 
without the steals because it's going to take that all-important batting average that I mentioned. Mondesi is a bit of a unicorn. I'm not really interested in him from a value standpoint. It's just whether or not you think he's going to be healthy, whether or not you think he's going to play enough to get the return. I mean, really, Mondesi is almost hard to predict being an $11 player unless you're assuming he's going to be out a ton. We've seen the damage that he could do in just a month. 16 steals, moves the needle, and wins you leagues. It almost doesn't matter how much he plays. So for me, he's a bit of a unicorn. I'm more into the next little tier. I like Arenado, and I like Bregman. In particular, I like Bregman because I believe he's healthy. I think what we saw last year was the anomaly, and I think he will be back hitting a top, one of the better lineups in the league. Everything should bounce back. I think people are looking at the stats from last year when he was hurt. He not only had a leg injury, he also had like a growth on his wrist that was bothering him. I'm not sure if it's so painful as it was irritating. He was having trouble fielding, throwing, or both. That growth has been removed. The leg is now healthy. You saw that reflected in the sprint speed. So I think Bregman is the real value here because even at the low projections, he's right near that value line, returning $10 at ADP 85, where I think he's going to outperform that, putting him above the line. You move down to Red, Rendon, LeMahieu, and Hayes, Especially the first two, Rendon and LeMahieu, really seem to be overvalued in terms of the bat X projections. Hayes, a little more in line with the steals. Those are going to be really helpful. Mankata, right on the line at 5 bucks. Though, again, I outlined the talent and the problems with the health. But it's not like health, like Tommy John health. It's health like respiratory health. And we've seen that recover, especially in young people, especially those with access to great doctors and training regiments. So at ADP 150, I think even though Mankata is on, technically on the value line, I think he's a value at the cost. The one person I left out in both parts of this exercise is Justin Turner. Holy cow. Justin Turner going off the board as the 11th drafted third baseman, ADP 150. But, 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 the big shaking butt is but that ADP return is the fourth off the board. So that's why we do exercises like this, people. And it doesn't mean I am going to tell you to only draft Justin Turner, but it does mean that we have to circle him for more granular level work. And it's that simple. The exercise does not have to be the end all be all, but the, if the exercise highlights something the way this does, again, remember I'm doing a lot of this work in real time with you. As much as I've done, it's hard to swallow it all, but man, look at at the return from Turner. He is projected to return more than Austin Riley on an apples-to-apples basis. He's going over 100 picks later. So, in conclusion, that's why we do these things, people. And whether or not you agree with it, think to yourself, other people are going to be doing this. Use that momentum, again, like I said, to juke and the judo move against them. So, that'll do it for the third base. I don't know if you're going to call this positional preview, the third base value plot breakdown or the something 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 or other with the big dude but you know we don't always want to fit into a mold people that's kind of always been my thing i really look to innovate because i look for holes in analysis i look for holes in the coverage and that's where i want to you know attack at the weak points and i think that's one of the weak points i think people fail to look at all of the projections and then map them out on the draft board because that's the price you have to pay. And at the end of the day, really, that's what it's all about, profiting a little bit on every single pick. Man, something like Turner, you might be talking about returning a $10 of profit on a single player. That's how you win leagues, everybody. So Turner absolutely representing my biggest value on the board, though I also like Bregman behind him. I think he's a bit more pragmatic because I think he's more likely to give us a full season. Turner, we know, is missed time, but DH in LA could get Turner the entire year. So don't just scoff, you know, at him at the idea of him playing the full season because of the DH. So I'm probably, I'm never going to feed Jose Ramirez, but you also need a top four pick to get him. So, you know, he's really pick dependent. Outside of that, I think I'm waiting. Depending on Riley, Riley for me is more of a point league guy, best ball league. I think that's where I'm on full attack, right? A guy like Riley, I really want to be into it where I'm slamming the gas pedal. Hard to do that in Roto again with the steals and guys like Bregman going a little bit later, guys like Turner going a lot later. The Turner profile probably more closely resembling Riley. And the reason I say that is because, right, that's part of the draft plan accounting for steals. Um, so I think that'll do it, everybody. Thanks so much for picking up what we're putting down here at the Mayo Media Net. Please hit the like button. 
please subscribe. Check out the playlist. Hit the like button on those. Get up in the comments, man. Let me know how I'm doing. Let Patty know how we're doing over here and anything else that you'd like to see. It really means a lot to us to cater to you. We want to make you better and smarter and sharper and richer at the end of the day. So if there's something that I'm missing, maybe something in my blind spot, man, I know I am not beyond reprieve. You get at me any time of day, any day of the week, and MLB moving averages on Twitter. So from the big dude from the big city, Loving you much. Appreciate your time. We'll catch you on the flip side. And remember, when you work this hard, if there's a lot less like, luck, rate, review, and subscribe. Pretty please. I'll catch you soon. All right, everyone. Peace.